In this video, we continue with our analysis of spin-spin uh, spin coupling by looking at a molecule that is like this. H sub A, uh, X, X, C, H sub B, H sub B, and then Y. All right, so uh, here we're going to have uh, two signals in the, in the proton NMR spectrum, one due to A sub A and one due to H sub B. Okay, notice that we're always assuming that uh, we have free rotation around single bonds. Okay, so that means that the electronic environments that A to B C are exactly identical, and that means that they will ori originate uh, just one signal. Okay? Now, uh, we have seen in a, pr in a prior video the splitting uh, patterns coming from uh, a situation in which we, we just had one atom of H A and one atom of H B. In this case, we change that to uh, one atom of H, uh, H A and then two atoms of HB, and try to analyze the splitting patterns that emerge from uh, those couplings. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is analyze what happens uh, to the signal of H sub B. Okay, so uh, if we come here to the NMR spectrum, okay, we're going to see uh, a peak right here uh, due to uh, H sub B, and uh, we, we ask the question, well, uh, how is the peak split? Well, uh, what happens is that uh, this nucleus, that is, uh, close to those H sub Bs uh, can have uh, either a spin up or a spin down. And again, that is going to split the uh, signal for H B into a doublet. So this actually doesn't change. Uh, the splitting pattern doesn't change with respect to what happened when you actually had only one H sub B. And that's the reason is that, well, uh, again, the splitting comes not from these atoms, but the splitting comes from uh, a neighboring atom. Okay? All right, so uh, a couple of important things here moving forward. Okay, notice that uh, one atom of one class, okay, so A to B, cannot split the signal of another nucleus of the same class. Okay, so if you uh, generate the same signal, uh, uh, atoms within that signal cannot split each other. Okay, so the splitting can only come from atoms that are from different signals. Okay, and the condition is that uh, the atoms that split have to be within three bonds. Okay, so notice that here we have one, two, three, one, two, three, Okay, so this H of A is going to be able to split this, uh, the signal of those two uh, H of Bs. But this H of B cannot split the signal of that, and that cannot split the, split the, split the signal of that because they are uh, the, same, uh, the same signal. Okay, so again, this comes down to be a, a doublet from the effect of this H of A, where 50% of the time you have a spin up and 50% of the time you have a spin down. Okay, so uh, that will be the signal of H of A. Now we're going to try to analyze what happens with the signal of H of A. Okay, and I'm going to leave this uh, to look at the signal of H A in uh, a, little, a little bit more clearly. Okay, so what happens is that now H of A can be split by two okay, NMR active nuclei that are within three bonds. Okay, so let's see how that would work out. Notice that H of B is going to be 50% of the time up and then 50% of the time down. Okay, that H of B. And then this A to B is going to be 50% of the time spinning towards the field and 50% of the time spinning against the field. Okay? And again, the external magnetic field is, uh, we're going to assume that it's pointing in this direction. All right, so what happens is that when you look at the combination of what is pointing up and pointing down uh, uh, in combination, okay, what is going to happen is that, well, 25% of the time, okay, when you get uh, all of this together, 25% of the time you're going to have that both H to B are pointing towards the field, okay? Uh, then 25% of the time, you get that one is up, the other one is down, 25%, this one is down, that one is up, and then 25%, both of them are down, okay? So again, notice that uh, uh, these two things are actually the same, okay? The total uh, uh, a magnetic field generated by either one of these combinations is actually a zero, okay? So uh, in the end, what you actually have is that uh, when you when you look at the uh, NMR spectrum of this H sub A signal, okay, what you will get is this H sub A, okay, which is uh, this signal right here, okay, is going to be looking at an external magnetic field that is modulated by the electronic environment, so minus one over sigma, and then you have three different contributions from uh, the spins that are within three bonds. Okay, you will have that twenty percent of the time you will have that uh, contribution that is positive, that is pointing in the same direction of the external, uh, external field, okay, uh, you have uh, that positive contribution, two little spins that add to this. 
Okay, so you're going to have that this uh, is split into a signal, where you have here your B naught, one minus sigma, and then this and that. Okay, that is a total large magnetic field. Now, 50 per, uh, 25 percent of the time, and this happens 25 percent of the time. And then 25 percent of the time, you're going to have that the signal you uh, experience is equal to uh, this extra magnetic field, and then two uh, negative contributions from those two spins. Okay, and this is modulated by the electrons. Okay, so overall, you actually see a smaller field right here than you have right here. Okay, so the, the field experienced by this A to A, 25% uh, of the time will be a little greater, 25% uh, of the time will be a little smaller. Okay, and what will happen is that, well, the rest of the time, okay, well, the contribution from here will cancel with that, the contribution of that will cancel with that, and you actually get that there's no contribution from those spins. But again, this happens 50% of the time. Okay, so 50% of the time, you will obtain that your signal is simply be uh, external, one minus sigma. Okay, so notice that uh, what appears here in the spectrum is going to be something that we call a triplet. Okay, this signal, is going to be split into three peaks. Uh, that one, that one, that one. But something interesting is that this peak is going to be twice as intense as this one's because you have that this happens 50% of the time. Okay? So that splitting pattern is going to be as follows. We uh, draw here the NMR spectrum, that is the chemical shift. Okay, you will get that uh, the signal of HA, which we're going to draw right here, is going to be equal to one, two, one. Right? It's a triplet, but this signal has twice the intensity of the ones uh, the terminus. Okay, those are the relative intensities. And that is the signal of A to A. A to B, we've already uh, talked about it. Okay, it will actually be a doublet. Okay, where the relative intensities are going to be one to one. Okay. Now, finally, we have to recognize that if we integrate the overall area of this signal, okay, that is going to be relative, uh, 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 directly proportional to the number of atoms that you have in that signal. So here, you will have that that integral will be equal to one, and here the integral of all of this area is gonna be equal to two, because you have two nuclei that contribute to the signal of A to B, okay? So this has been uh, an example of a coupling between uh, one spin of one kind and two spins of another kind, and again, what, that, uh, uh, what ends up happening is that when you couple two spins to a signal, you get a triplet, and when you couple in one, uh, one uh, spin, to one signal, you get a doublet. Okay, in the next video we're going to see a situation in which we actually couple this to a three H2Bs.